Today we're talking about the Federal Reserve's money printer. Now much like every printer I've ever dealt with, it's starting to encounter connectivity issues. This time with reality. Wait, you clicked print how many times? Well, I guess we're about to liquidate the heck out of this market. Now I cover the Federal Reserve a lot on this channel, and my commentary is usually focused on the key interest rate. This episode, well, it has nothing to do with that. Instead, we're talking about the Federal Reserve's unlimited bond buying program. Adjusting the interest rate basically tells banks, you know what? I'm going to make it cheap for you to lend money to other people. So, uh, lend out more money to people. This bond buying program, on the other hand, takes things one step further by saying, hey, banks, I made it cheap for you to lend money to other people, but I see you're lagging behind in the actual handing out cash part. Maybe it's because you have all these long term investments on your books instead of cash. How about I buy some of them in exchange for cash so that you have some money to lend out to people? Basically, one strategy is telling banks to lend their money, while the other strategy is injecting your cash directly into the markets, which requires you actually come up with some cash. Now, to give you an oversimplified version of an unnecessarily complicated process, the Federal Reserve achieves this goal by printing money. So that's the Federal Reserve policy we're going to be dealing with today. Now, before I move on to the deeper analysis section of this video, I have to point out that this bond buying strategy is very much not a charity for the rich. Hey guys, we're all going to come together and give banks a bunch of cash. Who's with me? Guys? Uh, is this thing on? The assets the Federal Reserve is buying are ones worth a lot of money in the long term. Take for example when we bailed out the banks in 2008 by buying their mortgage backed securities in exchange for cash that we assumed that they'd loan out. The Federal Reserve made over a hundred billion dollars in profit in the ensuing years. Now that profit would be handed over to the treasury and used to fund the budget. So why am I talking about this program today? Well, Federal Reserve officials are starting to look at the many Fed activities going on right now and say, all right, all right, we'll keep letting the horse go to water with low interest rates, but let's stop trying to make him drink it with this bond buying program. Now, this has led to an interesting internal debate about whether the Federal Reserve should be slowing down this gravy train. Now, the asset prices are at record highs right now. If you want to sell a bond, well, that's not going to be a problem. This Federal Reserve bond buying program, in their eyes, is essentially running a fan in a tornado. Look at all this wind we're generating. If we turn this thing off, everything's going to be calm. This is definitely not just a waste of electricity. Now, this argument is exemplified by Atlanta Federal Reserve President Raphael Bostic, who recently said, I'm in favor of going relatively fast. The economy is in a much different place today. I'm pretty confident that these markets are going to continue to function even with a more rapid withdrawal. Now, furthermore, these bankers actually see this strategy as trying to cram a square peg into a round hole. But we're pushing really, really hard, so it's kind of squeezing through a bit. This bond buying program is adept at addressing issues in demand, but not at treating the supply issues seen across the economy, both in the availability of certain goods and the labor market. And now, at the height of the pandemic, the problem was cash just wasn't flowing. Hey, let's print a bunch of cash and put that into investments so that otherwise healthy companies who are struggling a little bit and victims of circumstance have a lifeline to get through this hard time. That worked. Now people are back to buying things again and demand well, just isn't a problem anymore. The major risks now are shortages of labor and supplies, something that printing more money isn't really designed to solve. So, why keep this program alive? Well, different bankers are reading the leaves in a completely different cup of tea. A measure of United States financial liquidity is flashing alarms even before the Federal Reserve embarks on its planned winding down of asset purchases. Basically, unlimited bond buying might have created a bit of an asset bubble. 
These bankers see the Federal Reserve as holding this economic balloon by the tail. Do we let go and Or do we hold on to it until things have really settled and then gradually release the air? Now to dig a little deeper, at the height of the pandemic, people were just sitting on a bunch of cash with very few items to buy. The name of the game was either invest or keep sitting on the cash. Now that things are opening up and the economy is recovering, the economy is drinking a bit from the punch bowl that the stock market once had to itself. Now, an easy way to conceptualize this is to imagine that companies sell two products. A physical product that brings in cash and this other product, stocks, that determines the value of the company. Now, If this mentality is true, these two products are currently competing against each other. This is a potential roadblock that runs counter to everything we're hearing in the news right now. We have an expanding economy that's quickly depleting the nation's available money. Now, this deficit could become a huge problem for markets at a time when excess liquidity is seen as underpinning rallies and everything from bitcoin to meme stocks. Yeah, it's never a great sign when the value of all of your companies is based less on the revenues and more on the Federal Reserve's asset purchasing program. In fact, according to this mentality, things are so skewed in the markets right now that increased sales could actually hurt stock values as it diverts money away from investments. People on this side of the aisle point to 2013, the year of the taper tantrum, as the worst case scenario. Now, To give this history a little context, remember earlier in this episode when I talked about the highly profitable 2008 bank bailout program? Well, five years after that collapse, the Federal Reserve was still in full cash injection mode and starting to look for an off ramp. Now, During a hearing, Ben Bernanke let it slip that, alright everyone, the economy is headed in the right direction right now. If it keeps heading in the right direction, we're going to slow our bond buying program while keeping interest rates at zero. What the market heard was, oh no, the economy is getting better, and as a result, the Fed is ending their accommodative policies. Dump all your holdings now because the prices are going to eventually decline. The mere credible suggestion that the Fed might, in the future, slow this bond buying program cratered the value of bonds. Now, in that case, prices pretty quickly recovered, and if it didn't have the catchy title of taper tantrum, I think this one might have gotten lost to the history books. The concern today, though, is that a value shift in this market could be much more severe. Back then, the stock market was trading at 15 times earnings. Now it's 22 times earnings. It would be hard for the market to ignore it this time around. Now, of course, there's a very strong hawkish rebuttal to this. The 2013 taper tantrum was generated by Ben Bernanke letting slip that the Federal Reserve might buy fewer bonds if the economy continued to improve. Today, well, I'm talking about it, and I can quote several central bank presidents saying that the Fed should be tapering their investments soon. In response, not only are assets not going down in value, but their values actually appear to be still increasing. I mean, you have Texas Federal Reserve President Robert Kaplan going on TV and saying, I want to get it out into the market. People are on the notice that these adjustments are coming. The only question is when. Now you have to be on a new plane of denial to interpret that quote as anything other than here's what's going to happen. Get with the program or get off the train. Now even that, well, it didn't really get a reaction. Or did it? Now while the broader market has been strong, fewer stocks are participating in the latest leg up. This could be blamed on falling liquidity and the days of abundant cash flowing to all stocks are likely gone. Basically, if you thought that prices for consumer goods were experiencing inflation from the money printer, well, you should check out financial markets. They're bordering on hyperinflation. We have to keep printing this money so that those prices will slowly become independent. So that's really the debate over whether to wind down this bond buying program. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. 
Hello YouTube! Thank you so much to all my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, click on that link in the description. Like, subscribe, and do all that other fun YouTube stuff. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.